Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a dark academia transformation. So if you like playing with makeup and talking about the beauty community slash industry just as much as I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified of all future content. So if you do not know what dark academia is, it is a pretty popular aesthetic here on the internet. I've mainly found content for it on TikTok and Instagram. And to get more specific, I'm going to play a really helpful TikTok to explain this aesthetic instead of trying to do so myself. What is dark academia? The central theme of dark academia is a fascination with a narrative of a kind of life at elite schools like Ivy League colleges and boarding schools and prep schools. Certain books and movies that are set in these schools kind of form the basis of the aesthetic. It really relies on mythologies that surround these schools, especially secret societies. The architecture at these schools is considered not only beautiful, but ideal for profound experiences with literature and art. Emphasis is put on studying the classics and any poetry or novel from the Romantic movement. In terms of dressing, the more your clothes look like a 1940s prep school uniform, the better. There's a big queer influence, which comes from the idea of secret queer romances at these schools that were historically divided by gender. And with that comes a focus on the sensation of longing or yearning. So when I saw it, like every other bisexual or lesbian woman ever, I went, ooh. I like this. So today I have decided to transform myself into a dark academia character to give myself a dark academia makeover. So I got ready like I normally would, just my summer makeup and yoga pants and a tank top. Yeah, basic. Yeah, I noticed. And from here, I'm gonna take this base and turn myself into a dark academia version of me. Now, I've noticed there seems to be two variations of this aesthetic. There is the classic aesthetic, the more historically accurate aesthetic, and then there's what I like to call the CW version of this aesthetic, where you take the dark academia aesthetic and mix fan fiction and probably a little bit of magic. And I say that with love because I do love fan fiction and several shows on the CW. So that is why I think I'm gonna go for that more CW character, dark academia aesthetic version. With that, let's give me a dark academia makeover. So to start, I gotta take off what I got going on. I try not to use these wipes too often, but I do have a pack for times like this or if I really have intense makeup on. F it, I'm just gonna go wash my face, one second. Okay, I have washed my face, reapplied my moisturizer and sunscreen, and I'm ready to dive right on into redoing my makeup or, you know, doing it in a different way. So I'm gonna start like I usually would with brows, and I'm gonna use my LA Girl Brow Pomade, my favorite pomade. Three hours later. I made sure to make them really dark and kind of heavy because I have a wig and it is way darker than my natural hair color. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take the black out of the palette I'm using. This is the Soph Extra Revolution Extra Spice palette, one of my all-time favorite palettes. I'm just going to take some of the black shade Reputation, not a ton of it, but just a little bit to darken the brows even further. And I'm just kind of lightly dusting that through. So these will look really intense, but it'll all come together, trust me. I think. I hope. It'll all come together, I believe in myself. Now for the skin, I'm gonna start by priming, and I'm picturing like a really flawless base. So I'm gonna start with this Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Primer. This really does a great job of smoothing out the skin without being too fake looking. Like it doesn't completely fill the pores and just erase them, but it does a good job of just smoothing out the skin. Cause I feel like on TV, they always just look like they have flawless skin. And on any CW show that this character I am becoming would be on, she'd have flawless skin. Now for the foundation, I'm gonna be mixing two of them. I'm gonna be using my L'Oreal Paris Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear and the Revlon Color Stay for combination oily skin. This gives the most flawless, perfect base, but it doesn't last amazingly on me. Like I can get about six hours wear out of this, but this will last like super well on me. It's just not quite as flawless. So I think together they'll give me kind of what I'm looking for here. 
So I'm just gonna do a pump and a half of that and a pump and a half of that and mix them. So yes, I'm gonna go ahead and just use a lot. Take it down my neck as well. Where the hell did my sponge go? Um, okay, well I'm not sure where my sponge is, so I'm gonna use my foundation brush first and then I'll go look for my sponge. I just don't want this, I don't think it'll dry down too quickly, but this will also give me more coverage anyway. This is not giving me a good finish. It looks really textured, so hopefully if I spread it with a brush and then just go over it with a sponge, it'll even that out. I might have left the sponge in the bathroom when I wet it, so I'm gonna go check. Nope, it just fell on the floor and needs to be cleaned. Great. All right, I went ahead and cleaned my sponge, so I hope this hasn't set down yet completely because it really doesn't look that good, and I don't wanna have to take it off and redo it again. I've already done my makeup, or I'm doing my makeup for the second time today. Like, I don't wanna redo it again. Okay, it's looking like that's helping. I also kinda see the base as being very, like, pasty and gaunt and like someone who spends all their time inside reading books instead of is out in the sun, and luckily I already have that pasty bitch thing covered. Now I'm gonna use my Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer because this concealer has some coverage to it, and I want my eyes to obviously match my face. That'd look really weird if I did like a really light coverage concealer next to this cake face foundation I got going on, which it actually doesn't look cakey, it looks pretty good. I mean, that is pasty. That is definitely full coverage. I, skin, I don't know her. Kind of what I was going for, but now I'm going to try to cream contour using this Revolution Pro HD Camouflage Conceal Palette Light. This is actually a light concealer palette, but I'm so fair, I bought this going, yeah, that'll definitely work for me for a contour palette. So this is what it looks like. This is the first time I'm gonna be using it, so hopefully it works out well. I'm gonna start by using this shade and kind of go around the cheekbones. I did think it would be a little bit darker than that. I'm gonna add a little bit of this shade to see if it just helps it show up a little bit better. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, that's... That's better. Because I don't necessarily want it to look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup and have contoured my face. I just want to look like I'm naturally a porcelain doll with amazing cheekbones. Why is that so wrong? But I definitely thought looking at these pans that this would show up a little bit better. But since honestly I don't contour that often or hardly ever, the fact that it is so light, probably a good thing. Now I'm gonna go in with my Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek in the shade Rally. This is a really nice, more cool-toned pinky blush. Okay, I'm just gonna powder my face real quick. Since the goal with the base was to make my skin look flawless and the cheeks just look a little more shaped, but very subtle, like I'm not quite wearing makeup there, I think I accomplished that goal. A lot of work for the barest hint of something, but it is what it is. Now for the eyes, I'm kind of torn on whether I want to do something like really dark and dramatic and smoky or something like really simple. So I think I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle and maybe do like a smoky, dark, wing with a shadow and then maybe leave the rest kind of bare. So I think I want to use these burgundy tones because for some reason burgundy is just one of the dark academia colors to me along with black, gray, brown, the kind of standard ones. Burgundy and forest green also go with this aesthetic in my mind. So I'm gonna start... where's my liner brush? So I'm gonna go in with this shade Enchanted on a liner brush. I'm just gonna start running that along the lash line. And then I'm just taking a blank brush to start to make that more soft and smoky. 
Doing a technique I'm not really super comfortable with on camera is always nerve wracking, but the reason I'm doing this technique is because I don't usually do it, so I think it's good for a makeover, but also maybe I should have practiced. But again, I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do. I'm just adding a little bit more of that enchanted shade close to the lash line to make it a little deeper. Now I'm just gonna try to do a wing. That actually worked out a lot easier than I thought it would. I don't know if I wanna risk it by making it more smoky, but I am doing so. And I think I'm gonna take some of that same shade and just put a little bit along the outer half of the lower lash line. Doing good. I think I'm gonna add some black to my waterline and tight line. And I guess I'm smudging that below the lower lash line because that's what's happening. You know what, I'm too afraid to tight line. I'm not gonna tight line. But I am gonna add a little bit more of that enchanted shade over where I smudged the black on the lower lash line. Okay, I guess I'm just going all the way in with it. You know what, let's even do the point. I'm not gonna do like too much of a pronounced point on the inside, but I'm going to purposefully come all the way around the eye. I think that's a decent dark academia eye look. Maybe it needs just a hint of something in the crease. I'm gonna go into cookie dough and I'm gonna take the tiniest amount tiniest amount and just put okay that's more than I wanted but it's okay it's okay I'm gonna take a fluffier crease brush and I'm gonna go over it with my setting powder just to soften it even more because I just want the barest hint of something in the crease I like that Okay, I'm gonna do the other side and be right back. A little longer than a few minutes later. I do want some highlighter, but I don't want it like intense highlighty. I just want some brightness. So I'm gonna use my Nomad X Stockholm highlighter since this is a more everyday subtle-ish highlighter. And I'm not gonna take too much. I'm just gonna put a little bit right on the cheek and just a little bit down the nose. Cupid's bow. Like I said, not intense. And I'm gonna use this sample of the Benefit Bag Gal Bag, a new mascara from Benefit. So the tube is bomb, I am living. Let's see what the wand looks like. Oh, it's so big. I'm building the crap out of this to hopefully not have to put on false lashes. These are some pretty, pretty big lashes. Intense mascara. I still gotta put falsies on, don't I? <sighs> oh well, where where did I set them out? I'm gonna use these Kiss Magnetic Accent Lashes because if I have to wear lashes, I like these. Yeah, that's better. For the lips, I'm gonna use my Kylie lip liner in the shade Coconut and this Isadora Lip Desire Sculpting Lipstick in Bare Beige. I think this will be a really nice, just cool toned nude combination. Why is cool tone where my brain goes when I think of dark academia? I don't know, but it does. Yeah, I like that lip choice, but before we put on the wig and the outfit, next is nails. And I'm gonna be putting on, where did I put them? I have so much stuff just sitting around me. Ah, these all dashing nails. What style are these? I forget what style they are, but this is what they look like and I'll have them linked down below. These were sent to me as PR and I have really been enjoying the pairs I've worn so far. And honestly, like they're burgundy and plaid. If that's not dark academia, I don't know what is. So I went ahead and cut my nails as short as I could and I went ahead and chose which of the nails fit me best. And I'm gonna use these, which come in a little packet in each of the nail sets. It comes with a little cuticle pusher stick and two nail prep pads and a little nail, <laughs> and a little nail file. So I'm gonna start pushing my cuticles back. And 
I'm gonna take the nail one by one and they have these little tabs on them. So I'm just gonna pull that off and kind of slide it at an angle until it's in place and push it down. And I am just going to repeat, but I'm gonna save my thumbs for last just because it makes it easier. And there we go, nails all done. So thank you to All Dashing for sending me these NPR. If you would like to check them out for yourself, there's a link down in the description and there is also a coupon code where you can buy a pair and get another pair 50% off. It is not affiliated, it is just for you guys to save some money if you decide to check out these nails and some of their other super cute styles. These are the third set of All Dashing nails that I've put on and I've really been enjoying all of them. So now let's move on to the wig. Yes, yes I am using the viewfinder to do this. And then I'm just gonna take the black eyeshadow out of this again. We're gonna call that good enough um, as far as blending it in. And now I just have to get dressed. So I need some props and most of my books are packed away but I do have some options here for some dark academia literature. Um, Scream. This is a book about the sociology of fear. It's really interesting. That's a pretty dark academic book. Um, Neo Reaction, A Basilisk, Essays on and Around the Alt-Right, very interesting, also a great option. Um, ooh, my aunt gave me this for my birthday, which is about what if Hillary never married Bill Clinton, so I think, I think that's a good little stack of dark academia books. Ooh, and then Scarlet Letter, that's a classic, and this is kind of an older copy. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna make him notice me. Rhyming like it's poetry. Everything I ever see. I just like to overthink. Mock me, you pay the fee. No return and no receipts. Those of you that don't believe, patch, you don't know a thing. Quiet when I'm trying to sing. Quiet when I'm making beats. Quiet when I'm trying to think. Sorry, I don't mean to scream. I just feel like no one really gets me in a sad. And here we go. The full before and after. I feel like I ended up being your dark academia political science professor. <laughs> I I had so much fun with this. Let's see. Dark Academia political science professor who may or may not be the big bad in season one of her show, but also has an antagonistic yet flirtatious relationship with the wholesome, super attractive English professor and definitely ends up helping our main group by like the third season and is kind of the mom of the whole situation and who they call to fix whatever BS they are in with the school. Because political science, hello politics, she knows how to play campus politics and get them out of trouble. So that is my character. I expect fan art and fan fiction on my desk by Monday. <laughs> and let me know down in the comments 
who would your dark academia character be on this fantasy CW show? Let me know. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Oh, fun fact. Um, this necklace is actually from the set of Supernatural. I got it at the Supernatural set sale. So it actually is or was a prop on a CW.